Hi everyone and welcome. This is the first part of a two-part series of videos on C-Sharp Inheritance. And this is the 18th part of the C-Sharp for Beginners course. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on the use of inheritance in C-Sharp. So what is inheritance? Inheritance is one of the fundamental attributes of object-oriented programming. Inheritance allows the developer to design code where functionality in a base class can be reused by one or more derived classes through the implementation of inheritance. The class whose members are inherited is called the base class and a class that inherits from the base class is called a derived class. So let's use the theme of an online store to explore inheritance in C-sharp. Let's implement code that keeps track of the value currently in stock for our online store. So let's create a base class named product. Let's add a constructor to the product class. Let's create a private member variable named underscore quantity. This integer variable will store the number of items available in stock for a particular product. Let's create a public auto-implemented property named price. As we discussed in the previous tutorial on C-sharp classes, an auto-implemented property is a property that does not contain any code logic or statements. Other than that, it is like an ordinary property and provides an in-memory storage facility for data of a particular C-sharp type. So this property will store the price of a particular product in our online store. It is defined as a decimal data type. Choosing the decimal data type is recommended for members that store monetary values. This is because of the high precision and accuracy that the decimal data type supports. Let's provide a public method named add. This method will not return a value, so the void keyword must be present in the method definition. The code implementation for the add method increments the underscore quantity member variable by a value of one. The underscore quantity variable is a variable that stores the number of items in stock for a particular product. Let's create a public method named remove. This method will simply decrement the value stored in the underscore quantity member variable by a value of one, but only if the value is greater than zero. The remove method does not return a value, so the void keyword must be included as part of its method definition. Let's then create a method that returns a decimal value. Let's name this method get total value in stock. This method returns the total value in stock for a particular product. The code implementation for this method simply returns the result of the following calculation. The quantity of the product in stock multiplied by the price of a particular product. Let's create a derived class named desk. A desk is a product. So let's implement inheritance where the desk class inherits from the product class. In the context of our online store, a desk is a product. And this alludes to how a developer should think when designing an inheritance hierarchy. A desk is a product. The product is the base class and the desk is the derived class. The following text is taken from a Microsoft web page. Inheritance is used to express an is-a relationship between a base class and one or more derived classes, where the derived classes are specialized versions of the base class. The derived class is a type of the base class. In my opinion, this text can provide a foundation for understanding inheritance in C Sharp and .NET. In C Sharp, inheritance is implemented in code by adding a colon to the right of the derived class name in the class definition, followed by the name of the base class, i.e. the class from which the derived class inherits. So let's create a public constructor for our class named desk. Note that constructors are not inherited from the base class. Each class must have its own constructor. Note that if the developer does not include a constructor in a class, the compiler will not flag an error and a default parameterless constructor will be included behind the scenes as it were. Note that when a derived class is instantiated in code as an object, the order in which their respective constructors are executed is the base class gets executed first, followed by the constructors of one or more derived classes. 
If there is more than one derived class in an inheritance hierarchy, the order in which each derived class is included in the hierarchy will also be the order in which their constructors will be executed, i.e. from top to bottom, during the instantiation process. So we have implemented code where the desk class now inherits from the product class. What does this mean? As well as the accessible members of the product base class being available to be consumed by the desk derived class, all the accessible members in the product base class will also be available to call in code consuming an object instantiated from the desk class. Let's prove this. So let's create code to instantiate an object from the desk class in our main method. Note how we use the product class name preceding the desk object variable when defining the variable named desk. We can do this because the desk class inherits from the product class, which means the desk class is of type product. We then use the new keyword followed by the desk class name and empty brackets to instantiate a new object from the desk class. Let's then call the add method in the desk object variable twice. So this will result in the underscore quantity variable in the product class being incremented twice, which denotes that two desk products have been added to our stock. Now let's create code to write the total value of the desks that have been added to our stock to the console screen. So the narrative states total value of desks in stock, then we can call the get total value in stock method. The code within this method will multiply the quantity of the desks in stock by the price of one desk. Right, let's test the code. And the result is as expected. We have successfully implemented inheritance for the first product in our online store application, which is the desk. So let's add another product to the system. Let's say our online store also sells drones. So let's create a class named drone. In the context of our online store, a drone is a product. So let's implement inheritance whereby the drone class inherits from the product class. Let's add a public constructor to our drone class. And let's say there is a requirement for drones to be added to our stock in batches that can sometimes vary in size. So let's add a public auto-implemented property of the integer data type named quantity incremented, which will be used to store the batch size value. By default, let's set the quantity incremented property to a value of one. We can do this by setting its value to one within the drone class's constructor like this. So notice how we have added a new property to the drone class, and this property does not exist in the product base class. So here we have created specialist functionality for the drone product. This property is not included in the product class, but is special functionality that is required for the drone class. So this proves that we are able to extend the functionality of the drone class independently of the product base class. A derived class must support certain functionality in the base class, but on top of this base class functionality, the derived class can evolve independently. The derived class can be extended to accommodate specialist functionality as well as support the functionality implemented in the base class. So when the add method is called from calling client code on a drone object, we want to increment the amount of stock for drones by the value stored in the quantity incremented property. So to add this specialist functionality for the drone class, we need to override the add method that exists in the product base class. So first, we need to include the virtual keyword within the product class. The virtual keyword included as part of a class member's definition means that we are able to override this member's code implementation in a class that is derived from this base class. This is done through the use of the override keyword. So let's do this. Let's create an add method 
that includes the override keyword and has the same name and method signature as the add method that resides in the product base class. We can now implement code to increment the underscore quantity variable by the value stored in the quantity incremented property. But when we look at the IntelliSense dropdown list, the underscore quantity member variable is not included in the dropdown list. So the problem here is that the underscore quantity member variable has a private access modifier, which means it is not accessible to a derived class. A private member variable is only accessible to code that exists within the class in which the private member variable is declared. So in order to be able to increment the underscore quantity member variable from within a derived class, we need to replace the private keyword with the protected keyword when declaring the underscore quantity member variable in the product base class. So let's return to our drone class. And you can see the underscore quantity variable is now available when we type underscore in the code editor within the add method in our drone class. The protected access modifier within our base class enables the underscore quantity variable to be accessible from derived classes. So let's implement the specialist functionality for the drone derived class in the add method. We want to increment the value stored in the underscore quantity variable by the value stored in the quantity incremented property every time the add method is called on an object instantiated from the drone class. So let's implement code in our main method to instantiate a drone class. Let's set the quantity incremented public property that resides in the drone derived class to a value of 10. So this means that drones are added to our stock in batches of 10. But notice that we have declared the drone object as the product type. A drone is a product, but we cannot see the quantity incremented property because this property does not exist in the product base class. It is specialist functionality that only exists in the drone class. So we can perform a type cast on the drone object like this. To the left of the drone object variable, let's include the class name, drone, wrapped in brackets. Then let's wrap this code as well as the drone object variable in brackets. Then when we add a full stop to the right of the closing outer right bracket, we can now see the quantity incremented public property and we are now able to access this property. So let's set the value of the quantity incremented public property to a value of 10. Let's then set the price by setting an appropriate value for the price property. The price property resides in the product base class, so we do not need to perform any casting operation to access the price property. So we have now accessed two properties for our drone object, the price property implemented in the base class and the quantity incremented property that resides in the drone derived class. Let's call the add method on the drone object twice. So this code will add 20 drones to our stock. So for the next step, let's call the get total value in stock method to get the total value of drones in stock. So let's run the code. And the result is as expected. We now have two types of products in stock for our online store, desks and drones. So let's say that drones can be divided into two types. Let's say that one drone is referred to as a turbo drone and the other drone is referred to as a standard drone. So let's first implement code for our turbo drone. We want this turbo drone to inherit from the drone class as well as the product class. Right, so let's implement this code. So let's see if we can achieve this by first adding a colon, then the drone class name followed by a comma, and then the product class name. And this doesn't seem to work. Let's hover our mouse over the red squiggly line. And the compile time error message states that the turbo drone class cannot have multiple base classes, drone and product. So this brings us to an important aspect of inheritance in C Sharp and .NET. We are not allowed to implement multiple inheritance in C Sharp and .NET. C Sharp and .NET only supports single inheritance. But if we delete the comma product code, we have essentially achieved the implementation of an inheritance hierarchy. The drone class was coded to inherit from the product class. 
So if we implement inheritance where the turbo drone class inherits from the drone class, this will result in the turbo drone class inheriting from both the drone class and the product class. Although multiple inheritance is prohibited in C-sharp and .NET, inheritance in C-sharp and .NET is transitive. This allows the developer to define an inheritance hierarchy for a set of types. So basically this means that a class cannot inherit from more than one class at a time, but a class can inherit from a class that inherits from another class. So if for example class D inherits from class C, which inherits from class B, which inherits from class A, the accessible members of class A will be available to calling code, executing code on an object instantiated from class D. The accessible members of class B and class C will also be available to calling code executed on an object instantiated from class D. So let's implement inheritance for the standard drone class. Now let's look at a pictorial representation of the inheritance hierarchy for the classes representing products in our online store application. So you can see that a standard drone is a drone and a drone is a product and a standard drone is a product. A turbo drone is a drone and a drone is a product. A turbo drone is therefore a product. A desk is a product. So conversely, a product isn't always a drone. It can also be a desk. A drone isn't always a turbo drone. It can also be a standard drone. A product isn't always a desk. It could also be a drone. Right, let's implement code in the main method to instantiate a turbo drone and a standard drone. And let's write code that writes the total value of each of these types of drones currently in stock to the console screen. In the second part of this tutorial, we'll finish off our code example and also demonstrate the power that can be achieved when inheritance is implemented correctly. Please like, subscribe, share, comment to support the channel. It will be greatly appreciated. And please smash the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. As always, the code created in this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Thank you and take care. Thank you.